There's a lot of information about green drakes available, both in terms of the biology of this mayfly, that is either a western or eastern, and flies that are to imitate all the variety of stages in the life of the green drake. I'm tying this green drake from the illustration in Mary Orvis Marbury's book, Favorite Flies and Their Histories. And particular to the illustration is that there isn't a lot of green in it. So I am going to take a little bit of liberty with Mary's illustration, or the illustration from the fly that Mary tied for her book and add a little bit of olive to this fly. So I am tying it on a number 12 dry fly hook. I'm using red thread because the head on the fly in the illustration is red. I'm putting a gold tag down here at the hook bend. So this is a bicolor tinsel, so I tie it in with the gold side towards the hook. And then as I wrap it, I flip it and the gold side shows. So I'm gonna take that down the bend just a little ways and come back up to my tie-in point there. Catch that tag in and I'm going to wrap it up the shank just a little ways and I'm going to cut it long. One of the things that I want to make sure of with this fly is that I don't build up a big uh, body at the tail end. So if I put all of my ingredients that are uh, here at the back of the hook, but tie them in the length of the shank, then I am less likely to bulk out at the at the tail end. For the tail on this fly, I have three fibers from a lemon wood duck feather. And, and I'm going to be using the lemon wood duck for the wing also. So I'm going to take those three fibers, give me a nice long tail, a uh, hook shank or longer again, and I'm going to tie those in and take my thread up, if I can keep them on top of the shank. I'll clip out the butt ends and then I'm going to use black silk thread for the rib. So I'll tie that in next and I can pinch wrap. That way I grab my tying thread and get that rib material tied in. Take that all the way back to the tail and bring my thread back up to the front where here's where I'm going to deviate from Mary's fly. She has a white body on her fly. I'm going to use olive and I'm using an olive yarn, olive wool yarn. And again, I'm tying it in the whole length of the shank because that will help me wrap a body that is more even. Bring my thread back up to the front and then I can just wrap up over the top of that. Just one wrap. It's a this in nature this is considered a very um, buff fly. It's it's very muscular they say. So it's got a lot of bulk to it, but in the illustration that uh, is in Mary's book. It has a fairly fine, even body. And 
I'm going to do homage to the biology of the fly by giving it a olive body as opposed to the white body in Mary's illustration. Then I'm going to see if I can get that tail to stand up and counter wrap the rib. That way it stays on top of the body material and it doesn't go down between the fibers of the body material. And then very conscious on this fly to stay away from the eye of the hook so that I have plenty of room for my front hackle and the wing, which I'll be tying in on top of the hackle. For the hackle, I am using this honey dry fly hackle and tying it in shiny side out so that the fibers lean backwards. That's not really the way that a dry fly is normally tied now, but in the illustration, the fiber hackles are leaning back towards the bend of the hook although they're going to stand up pretty straight with this particular hackle feather. But trying to keep away from the eye so that I don't crowd the eye with all those fibers. What was that? Four wraps? I think that's probably plenty. This is a dry fly. So I'm using a dry fly hackle and wrapping it with these fine fibers that will helpfully help this fly float. Pull back on the stem and then wrap up over that. Start wrapping the head. Don't want to get it too big yet because I do need to wrap in the wing and I want to keep try to keep that eye clean. This is a fairly heavy stemmed hackle so instead of trying to break it out I'm just going to clip it and then try to kind of pull down on all those fibers, but it doesn't really matter that much. Try to keep that tail standing up a little bit better. Then what I've done it, with one of these feathers is clipped out the tip of it and then further down the shank. So I have a V and I'll just fold that V in half measure my wing. In nature, these green drakes have long wings. So I am tying it with a fairly long wing. Wrap up over that wing to create the head. And then clip out the butt ends. You can use the eye of the fly of the hook to create the angle for clipping. Try to keep that eye clean. It looks like I've got stuff over the eye. Finish wrapping up that head. Put a whip finish on it. Let's see, yeah, completely crowded the eye there, but I think I can still get the head cement that I use is a diluted goop. And I just stick a needle in my bottle, my jar, and drop some of that on the head. That will dry clear. When it's wet it gets darker, but it will dry clear. And then I can make sure that my eye is not gooped up by pushing a feather through the eye. Just have a dry fly hackle feather that I can pull through the eye and make sure that it's clean. So a drake, a green drake from Mary Orvis Marbury's book, Favorite Flies and Their Histories.